your last name, I'm sorry. Rosie to me. <laughs> and Sunny James. And we're here to discuss whole genome sequencing technology with precision formulated probiotics for the treatment of autism. Um, Sun Genomics is partnering with Arizona State University's Autism Asperger's Research Program and the Biodesign Institute. Um, I'm sure many of you are by now familiar with the MTT study, um, but what many of you may not know is that my son was one of the participants in that study, and um, I have witnessed firsthand what altering the gut microbiota can do for our children. So that is why um, this topic is very near and dear to my heart, and I'm super excited to try to um, share this Im important information with everybody. Um, and I want to discuss their current project. So with that, um, hello to everybody, Dr. Adams, Dr. Brown, Dr. Jane, or Sunny Jane, everybody, hello. And um, where can we start? Let's start with uh, Dr. Rosie. Can you tell us a little bit about the microbiome and why this is important to us or our kids? So the, the microbiome are all the little creatures, microorganisms that live um, in our bodies in symbiosis with us. And we have trillions of these microbes in our body. And not only that, um, when we sequence the human genome and all the genes from these microbes, we know that we have about 100 times more genes in our body that are from microbes. What that means is that we're only 1% human and we're 99% microbe. And these microbes are very important because they interact with us every day and they help us with many different things that are important for our everyday well being, especially the microbes that live in our gut. They help us digest our food, they produce vitamins, they interact with our immune system, um, and they produce chemicals also that might interact with our brain they might lead to anxiety or less anxiety, um, behavioral outcomes. So that's why the microbiome is so important. And it's very important to also, we are 99% micro. Many of these things that I just mentioned can be enhanced and guided in the right direction towards health um, by modifying the microbiome. Okay, um, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about this study that is coming up? Dr. Adams, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, what we are planning to learn from this study and um, how the study is going to take place. A little bit more info. Oh, you're muted. Okay, can you hear you me go. now? All right, now good. Go. So um, we're very excited about this study. Uh, I think as most people know, we had done a previous study with microbiota transplant and saw a lot of great improvements in GI symptoms and autism symptoms. And we're still continuing that work and that work uh, requires FDA approval. And we're uh, at phase two studies with that. We're actively continuing that with studies for children and adults. Um, but it's going to be still several more years before it's approved by the FDA. So in the meantime, we want to continue to look at additional ways to treat gut bacteria and things that we can do now. And so um, the whole point of this study is really in several ways to find out first, just from the initial samples that we uh, collect and are analyzed by Sun Genomics, what is different in the gut bacteria in children with autism versus typical children. And then secondly, can we make improvements in that microbiome through the use of special customized probiotics? And through those customized probiotics that Sun Genomics develops, can we then improve GI symptoms? Can we improve autism symptoms by altering each person's gut bacteria? And so we'll learn a lot from this study about uh, both what is unusual in autism at the start and about what changes we see and how different people may need different types of probiotics. So we don't think it's a one size fits all. Some people may be high in one level of bacteria, some people may be low in another. There's a lot of variation from each person, partly due to the different foods they eat, 
partly due to the different bacteria they inherited from their mother, uh, partly due to the antibiotics that they've had. So there are a lot of different factors that make each person's microbiome quite different. And so, however, there are still some general features that we see. And so I'll, we can say a little bit more about that, but that's kind of a quick overview of what we hope to learn. Already we have over 200 people who have signed up for the studies. This is the largest probiotic study ever done for autism. So we're very excited and very soon we're going to start seeing some of those important results. But I'd like to turn it over to the um, CEO of Sun Genomics, um, Sonny Jane, who can tell us more about um, how he got involved in this how he uh, reached out to us to talk about this study and about some of the great capabilities that they have. And then we can explain more about the study details. So Sonny, would you like to take it from there? Yeah, sure. Th thanks, Dr. Adams. And um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Dana, for inviting us. Um, you know what, when um, my son was born in 2016, um, I was unaware of this impact that the gut microbiome can have on um, neural development in general, child development. Um, but he was exhibiting some, some symptoms uh, of, of GI distress, and um, I just happened to have some background skills in, in being able to um, harness his poop and um, analyze the DNA and run it through bioinformatics and, and um, get some IDs of microbes in his gut. And what we found was um, that he had elevated levels of this inflammatory microbe, this Clostridium boltiae microbe in his gut. And, um, and, and I tried to share that with, um, I definitely shared it with my wife and, and our, our, our practice, uh, our pediatrician, and, and started to pull a lot of the research and literature around this particular organism and found a lot of strong associations to um, risk indications for autism. And so instead of um, allowing the, the period of time uh, you know, until you can really, really get a diagnosis uh, for ASD or autism, um, which he was only six months at the time, um, my wife and I put together as much information as we could and decided to, to make a, a decision. And that was whether or not to, to, to have an intervention in his gut system. And the one that the doctor guided was a probiotic. And I thought, okay, well, I go to the store, pick up a probiotic. That seems simple. Uh, and this is where it was sort of beknownst to me. I didn't realize how big the probiotic industry had already gotten, $300 million at the time, now several billion dollars as a dietary supplement market. And, and my background in, in microbiology um, and molecular medicine, it just didn't make sense of how we were choosing a living organism to seed into the gut microbiome, into, into the child's gut. Uh, and that uh, led me down the rabbit hole. And uh, you know, I was on a quest to find the ultimate probiotic for my son to reduce this inflammatory microbe. Um, and we spent about $30,000 on my credit card and eight months later developed the first precision probiotic uh, and gave it to him and found the inflammatory microbe went down. And, um, and so that, that seemed like an anecdotal success and it was interesting. Um, and now we want to de democratize that type of method technology um, and enable others um, to have that at their fingertips the same way um, I was able to do it. Now we can do it much faster. It takes us, uh, we can do it as fast as eight days. Uh, from sample to um, precision probiotics, and we're super excited to to use that platform uh, as a way to enable this super exciting research. I mean, I haven't seen a landmark research in the microbiome space as big as this um, uh, with the MTT study, and um, we believe in that same philosophy that modulation of the gut microbiome can lead to uh, improved benefits. Mm. Yeah. So with this study, let's see, let's move on to getting some more detail about that study and what we plan on learning from that study. So can you please provide us a step-by-step -step description of what the research will entail and what your hypothesis is are going to be um, into the study or what we're hoping to achieve with this study? 
So I can go ahead and explain the study design and then turn it over to Dr. Rose to talk more about um, how we'll try to interpret those results and then turn it back to Sunny to explain more, I think. Um, so the basic idea of the study is very simple. Um, right now, Sun Genomics offers anyone in um, the country the opportunity to send in their stool samples and have them analyzed by Sun Genomics to figure out exactly by looking at um, hundreds to thousands of species of bacteria, what bacteria are present and interpreting then how to determine what is the best probiotic for that individual. And so then they can pick from a variety of strains that are available today, which strains might be best for that person to try to improve on their microbiome. So the what it, so anyone today can do that and be a customer of Sun Genomics. Where the research part of it comes in is we're inviting the autism community to also agree to share their data with us and also agree to fill out some simple questionnaires at the beginning of the study and three months later to see how GI symptoms and autism symptoms are at the start of the study and to see how those autism and GI symptoms are three months later. So what we hope to learn from just the start of the study is by looking at data from hundreds of families, we'll be able to see what are common differences. So as Sunny mentioned, C. Boltier, named after an autism mom who realized how dangerous that type of uh, bacteria is. We'll look at that type of bacteria and many others that are known to be harmful um, and very often much higher in children with autism. And then we'll also see, does that correlate with gut symptoms? Does that correlate with autism symptoms and specific autism symptoms? Does that bacteria affect more language? Does it affect sleep problems, GI disorders, um, irritability, hyperactivity, et cetera? And then as we make changes, as we provide the customized probiotic from Sun Genomics, is that able to improve the microbiome? And then we'll reassess GI symptoms and autism symptoms using just some simple questionnaires. Again, asking the same questions three months after, after three months of treatment to see what changes have occurred. And so this will allow us to then gain information and improve on the algorithm that Sun Genomics has developed for how to optimize the um, probiotic for each person. And so we hope we'll see good improvements we can't promise anything because this is brand new, but we certainly hope we'll see improvements in many children. And in some we don't, then we'll learn from that. And after the first round, if families want to continue, they can do a second round of testing and then get a re revised probiotic and then repeat it another time if they wish to. So it's totally up to them if they wish to do that. Because this is a, a study um, where, in which ASU is observing the, what is happening during the treatment. So families do have to be customers of Sun Genomics. They do have to go ahead and purchase uh, the Sun Genomics test and kit. And Sunny, correct me, I think that's about $350 for the initial test, which includes a three-month supply of the probiotic. Is that right, Sunny? Yep, that's right. And we do have offer some discounts and, and, and coupon codes as well. So you can look out for those. Yeah. And so that's a great feature that by being part of the study, by filling out some of the autism and GI symptom questionnaires, you'll get some discounts on that price. And then again, three months later, we ask you to again, fill out the same GI and autism symptom questionnaires. It's not that much time, it's about 30 minutes, but it's gonna be really helpful in helping us understand what bacteria are different in kids with autism and what is changing um, as a function of treatment and seeing how the microbiome changes and what effects that might have. That's kind of a quick overview. So 30 minutes of questionnaires at the beginning, 30 minutes of questionnaires three months later, as hopefully we'll see some good improvements. But um, Rosie, would you like to explain a bit more about how we'll look at the microbiome and then we can turn it back to Sunny? Yeah, I, I think that, that um, already this is probably the biggest um, autism microbiome study. Um, and we're looking at all 
the whole genome of the microbes, not just the signatures which we normally use. Um, so by looking at the whole genome of the microbe, we get a better characterization of which microbes are there. Um, and so even just the beginning sample will provide a lot of information. And I know Dr. Adams mentioned that we're going to look at certain non-beneficial microbes. Um, I'm all about beneficial microbes, so that's why I don't even mention the, the, bad, the bad ones, um, which might be in excess in the beginning. But it's also very important for us to see what changes, which are the microbes that uh, become more abundant as we get rid of the non-beneficial ones, and which of those might be important to improve GI health and behavior, because this is what could lead to an even better customized um, probiotic that is targeted um, to improve um, behavior. Um, it's important um, to mention that, like Dr. Adams said, we're not, we can't promise that this will work, but if it doesn't work, know that on a research study that is so valuable because one of the things that we also want to see is can we predict who is a good candidate for this therapy? And we can only um, assess that question if we have some people that are good candidates and some people that are not. So if you're not, maybe we will be able in the future to predict based on your microbiome that, okay, you have certain microbes and certain microbiome characteristics that would make you a great candidate for this therapy, you should do it. Or we could say, you know what? Don't waste your money, you're not a good candidate. And so A, maybe predictors for success for the therapies and B, which are the microorganisms that come up as behavior improves and as GI improves and also hopefully a few metabolites also, not just um, microorganisms. Um, it's important to mention that um, probiotics work by getting into the gut and interacting with other microbes. So we might see the microbes that we're putting in as probiotics being the ones that come up, but we might see that they actually come in there and become really helpful and beneficial to other microbes that are important. And this is the one of the things that our study will help us address. Um, so I think with that, I've explained most of it. Um, I can pass it to Sonny if that's OK. Yeah, sure. I will just add one other thing, a part of the study. Um, so Sun Genomics is supplying the collection kit, which is a slightly modified kit of our, our standard um, collection kit, and that it really enables um, the future work uh, to be done on the sample. So further analysis to be done on the sample. So everything we've sort of been talking about in identifying the microbes of your gut, that's something that Sun Genomics does routinely. And what's going to be above and beyond that is all the deep science and mechanistic understanding of what that truly means and being able to um, you know, our freezers and fridges, fridges are, are filling up with these samples now and we're storing hundreds of samples. And at some point we'll be able to, to not only look at the data, but then actually um, go into the samples to further um, elucidate sort of mechanisms or further look at like, okay, exactly what does that mean? Can we run this other test? Can we run another test? And that type of work, um, I don't believe has, has really ever been done based off of the microbiome and then to have access um, to the study samples um, retroactively or afterwards. Um, so, I, you know, it's it's going to be amazing to have um, the samples just to begin with. And then um, we're super excited to, to get the algorithm even improved over time as we learn. And that's what our subscription model is really based on is even though uh, we start at, at one place and if the efficacy is not where we need it to be, there's a learning part uh, that is uh, given back into the system. And so over time, we hope to be able to drive that that benefit. And we track all that through the mobile app and the surveys that, that Dr. Adams was mentioning um, that both of Dr. Rosie and Dr. Adams helped us kind of put together so we understand what are the ways that we should begin tracking uh, the feedback loop. Dana, I think you're still on mute. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. Um, so 
threw myself sideways there. Um, I had a couple of questions as far as uh, the number of participants. Is, is there a cap or are you just looking for as many people as you can, number of families in, in the study? Um, are, are we, is there, is there a number of participants that you're capping it off at or? Yeah. So there's not a limit per se that we have approval to enroll up to a thousand participants. And we already have over 200 who have uh, signed up, which is great. That's not a hard limit, um, but we think that um, already with the first couple hundred, we'll probably have enough to learn a great deal about what's different in children with autism. But there is a lot of diversity. And one of the biggest challenges, um, just to drive home to everyone, is, as Rosie was discussing, is how complex the microbiome is. We're dealing with, of order, a thousand or more species of bacteria. And sometimes even within a species, there are certain strains, and one strain might be different from another. And they have many, many different roles. What's great about the technology that Sun Genomics uses is that um, we're able to investigate um, what is present down to the species level. And that gives us a lot of understanding about what might be the potential function as we understand the genetics of those species. And, and I'll invite Dr. Rosie to say more about that. But I just don't want people to underestimate how complex the microbiome is with a thousand plus species. The probiotics we're using are limited to the ones that are approved by the FDA. There's a limited number of those, but we believe that those can influence quite a few other species. And so by changing the environment, as Dr. Rosie has educated me, if we can change the environment, that can help infect many, many other species as well. There have been about a dozen studies already of probiotics for autism. The problem is with these studies, they often are using a one-size-fits-all approach. They often don't look very much at um, what many of the studies have not even looked at how the probiotics have changed the uh, gut bacteria. They just look only at effects on behavior. Often they've used very limited assessments. So it's great that people have done these studies, but um, I think that they've been limited by the size and the scope of these studies. This study is treating each person as an individual because as we've seen from the many uh, studies we've done, although there are a few common features, often children are high in certain uh, pathogenic clostridia, Often they're low in Prevotella and certain beneficial bacteria. Um, there is quite a bit of variation from child to child. And so I think that's where this customization approach, I think makes a lot of sense. We still have a lot to learn about it, but this is going to be the first step towards learning. And I think with the help of everyone in the autism community, uh, anyone who wants to participate in this study, we hope there'll be good improvement, but even, even if there isn't, then we'll be able to learn, well, why did some people do better than others? What's different about their diet? What's different about their gut bacteria? And that will help us give us a lot of clues, as Rosie was saying, about how to figure out who are better candidates in future and how, as Sonny was saying, he can work on continuing to improve his algorithm to make these probiotics better for each person. Rosie, would you like to say a little bit more about the complexities of the microbiome and how the bacteria can interact with one another? I'm not sure what you want to hear, Jim. <laughs> I mean, bacteria can interact with each other in a in a in a competitive way, or they can interact with each other in a in a in a helpful way. They interact with each other by helping each other. They produce something that the other bacteria will consume, but they help each other so they can collaborate or they can compete. Um, and this happens in the gut all the time. And so we want to find when we when we do an intervention like a probiotic, you want to make sure that the probiotic is actually enhancing the collaboration between the beneficial microbes. I don't know if that's where you were heading or what, what did you want me to talk about? No, I, I think that's very good. I mean, yeah. I think a good way to phrase it is that the bacteria are com often competing for the same food in some cases, right. but they also can interact and work with one another. So certain yeah. clostridia, make certain very nasty toxins like C. diff, which causes um, life-threatening diarrhea. 
very nasty toxins. That's not so high necessarily in most kids with autism, but other Clostridia, C. bolte, C. histolyticum, can be very high. On the other hand, as we found out in our study, bifidobacteria tends to be lower in children with autism, but not in every child. Some children may be high in lactobacillus, but not every child. So again, figuring out who needs what. The best, I think an analogy that we came up with, Rosie, that I think is worth saying again, it's like having a village populated with a thousand people. You don't want to have a thousand lawyers in your village and no farmers. You don't want to have a thousand farmers without a doctor present. You need to have all of those, you need a diverse um, number of people in the village to have a healthy village, farmers and doctors and school teachers and lawyers. In the same way, we need that sort of healthy a microbiome in the gut. And, and you want something that we call functional diversity. You always want to have more than one doctor. So if that doctor gets sick, you have someone else to come to the rescue. So it's the same with microbes. Um, and so you want to have a, a variety of microbes that can do the same job. So the job gets done no matter what. And this right. is something that we don't always read just by learning the name of the microbe. Um, so another thing that hasn't been mentioned, but that that's something that we have in the plans for the future, is as Sun Genomics collects all the DNA of these microbes and they use it to better classify these microbes, we also have the capability of looking at that DNA to see what are the possible things that these microbes can do? What are their possible metabolic pathways? What are the possible enzymes that they can make? And what are the possible things that they can do for us? Um, so that is also another big project, uh, but that's something that we have, you know, in sight for the future too, because that's very important. Because there could be two microbes that have a different name, but have the same function. They're doing, you know, the same thing, and we can figure some of these things also with their DNA. And so whereas past studies have mostly focused on what species are present, I think where Rosie is driving at is if we can instead look at not the species, but the function of those bacteria. So for example, one very important role of our gut bacteria is a small subset of them take the fiber in our food and convert it into butyrate, which is the main food for the cells that line the gut. The average American male consumes only a third as much fiber as is recommended. Women consume only about half what's recommended. So most people aren't getting enough fiber in their diet, and hence they aren't producing enough butyrate. So the cells that line the colon um, and the intestine re receive about 60 to 70% of their energy from the butyrate. So if you aren't getting the fiber, or if you don't have the bacteria you need that can eat the fiber to convert it to butyrate, then you're going to have very sick intestine. So I think the key issue to come back to is balance. We need a balance. We need a diverse microbiome. And how are you going to know what you need? As Sunny mentioned, I think so eloquently, you can go to a store and pick, well, I guess my child is high in this bacteria, or I guess they're high in that one. You can do a trial and error. We're trying to do it more scientifically. We know we have a lot to learn, but it just makes a lot more sense. You know, if you're trying to balance your car tires, if you want to have a balance of them, you don't need one inflated more than the other. You need them all inflated the same amount. We need, again, a balance of our microbiome. So that way they can hopefully perform all of those important functions of digesting our food, fighting off pathogens, producing butyrate for our gut, et cetera. But Sonny, do you want to say more about um, your views on the importance of a balanced microbiome or what you hope to achieve through the probiotics? Yeah, and I will just add um, that the maybe give a little detail on the formulation process um, uh, as well. Um, so once we receive uh, the, the stool sample, we extract the DNA um, and then that DNA goes through a preparation step called library prep and then DNA sequencing. Um, and this DNA sequencing technology is relatively new in the past decade. And the method that Dr. Rosie was mentioning is, is called uh, whole genome sequencing or metagenomic sequencing. And uh, that allows that deep resolution, high resolution. You can kind of think of it as like 
looking at uh, t TV with the rabbit ears versus your 4K OLED TV. It is that really high resolution profiling that gives us insight into what's happening in the gut system, what are the organisms and what can we do um, to modulate. Um, but we also um, then take it a step further. So it's not just the data, um, we're actually crafting the solution. So we've got uh, a laboratory process called micromanufacturing where um, software algorithms uh, determine a series of ingredients and those ingredients can include probiotics, um, which are the living organisms that 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 produce the benefit in the gut. But it can also um, we also have ingredients that are prebiotics, which feed the healthy organisms of the gut. And then we also have botanicals and, and herbal extracts and um, uh, natural uh, extracts from fruits and vegetables that we uh, supply in there, which also can act as prebiotics or, or providing things like polyphenols or um, uh, um, beneficial um, chemicals for, for the gut system from a natural natural fruit or vegetable source. Um, and we package that all, all together in a single pill uh, and uh, deliver that back uh, to you in a 90 day supply uh, and add some personalization as well to it. And uh, that process is, as you can imagine, uh, you know, doing that for one individual and only making 90 pills for them is, is very bespoke, customized probiotic manufacturing, um, as opposed to what you get off the shelf. It, you know, there's a, a run of 10,000 bottle minimums at, in one set formula when you go to most toll manufacturers for creating a probiotic formulation. So this is taking that, that formulations process and breaking it down to um, the one individual um, and then monitoring the success of that over time. Uh, and so our view is that by doing that, you're, you're providing uh, not only the probiotic organisms that can benefit the individual, but potentially the nutrient sources that can enrich for the other organisms that we can't necessarily modulate through probiotics. Um, so Dr. Adams and Dr. Rosie both mentioned the, the diversity of the gut and how many microbes are involved in the gut system. And oftentimes through the analysis, we see these, these microbes that either are producing gas or, you know, maybe a bloating symptom, or maybe it's a, um, an organism that is not necessarily beneficial. Uh, how do we influence the concentration of that? And that's done through scientific literature research, these prebiotic ingredients or botanicals that also have supporting clinical research. Um, and that all kind of feeds into the formulations process um, so that you don't have to take like six capsules or eight capsules, it's just a single capsule. And for children, we formulate in powders um, and we have a non-dairy powder and we have uh, all sorts of non-allergenic um, powders that you can choose from and you can also customize that yourself. Um, so if there's a particular ingredient that you know your child or, or the participant knows that they are allergic to, you can just let us know and we can exclude that or include that if that's something you want. Okay. <clears throat> I had a couple of quick questions about that. When 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 parents are participating, are they also, when I participated in former studies, I know that we were provided a lot of data um, like from the laboratory, a lot of our lab results. Are you providing that kind of data for participants as well? Are you giving them, what does their child's stool sample look like in that, in that data so that they can then maybe share that with their physician and also learn and track what's going on in their child's body. So they're getting a full report as to what's going on as, as you guys are studying this information. Yeah, that's right, Dana. And every customer gets that type of um, report back to them. But what's different with this study is we've built those um, surveys and those tracking tools in addition to that specifically related to mm -hmm. autism and then we actually score some of those surveys and provide metrics and ways that you can actually measure that between time point one and a time point two follow up so that you also get access to that information, which in some studies you may not get to see that type of information like the SRS2 survey results. Um, and so we've built some additional um, uh, tracking information that's all accessible th via the mobile app um, and some of it via, via the web portal. Okay. And so another through these standardized questionnaires, you'll get them the scores back, and that will be very valuable to you. 
but also, Sonny, maybe you want to say a little bit more about what's involved in the microbiome report. I think it's nice that you give a simple summary score, zero to 100. It's very easy for people to see, okay, zero, not a very good score, 100, that's really great. And then they can go dive from there a little bit deeper. Yeah, we do try to break down the microbiome into a quick snapshot view. And uh, one thing we do is the microbiome score. So you can see if, well, if you're below 30, you might be in a dysbiosis. If you're in the 60s, you might be healthy. And if you're above 60, you might be in a performance type of gut microbiome where you have lots of butyric production and lots of good short chain fatty acid or genetic potential as it was described here. Um, and so we try to do that the best we can. We also have some sub scores um, that we are working on, including a score related to longevity in the microbiome, uh, joint health in the microbiome, immune health in the microbiome, and um, bad microbes uh, and your microbiome. Yeah, we had some questions coming in from parents and um, or, or viewers. Uh, one was what, and of course we don't know this yet, but they ask, what is the um, the length of colonization? Once once they're using this product, do you know how long if that if if it if they're colonized, how long does that stay in the gut? And are they good for a long period of time or not? Um, any idea yet how long we can ex or how they can expect how long they can expect the results to last, or if this is something they have to continue? fine tune over time. So today, most of the probiotic strains available on the market are not built to um, colonize the gut system. That is an area of research and exploration, though, to find ones that have the receptors that would actually bind the intestinal epithelial cells and, and actually colonize for a longer period of time. Uh, we do know that uh, in a washout period where you stop taking the probiotics, that the probiotics do show up uh, for as long as two weeks after you've stopped taking it and potentially longer. Um, but the benefits after a washout period of stopping the probiotic, I don't believe we fully understand that yet. We're just still trying to understand that. That feedback loop is a little bit hard to get from uh, participants because they've stopped being a part of the ecosystem and, and taking the product and taking the regut test um, or providing feedback uh, on their surveys. So it's a little bit harder to get that type of data. So this is more information to be able to gather with the study, which will help you answer that question in the future. Okay. And so. one parent wanted to know about the fungal component. Are, is this part of the test, the stool test that, that you're doing? Are you giving that data as well? We know we're getting a lot of bacterial information. What about the other components going on in our gut? Yeah, we have a eukaryotic profile analysis as well. So prokaryotes are like the bacteria and eukaryotes are like the, the fungus or yeast organisms as well. Um, so candida might be a common one that um, um, people may have heard of, we can detect for that. There are several species of candida that are common. Um, and um, actually my, my son had, a, had a, a candida infection on the skin and uh, we, we swabbed his skin and we're, we're testing it out to see if we can detect it off the skin now. Um, but we, we do take a look at uh, all the, the microbes of the gut, which includes archaea, viruses, um, and um, other uh, parasites um, in addition to the bacteria. This is one of the advantages of doing the whole genome sequencing that we're doing with Sun Genomics because when other uh, technologies are used, like using a label just for bacteria, then you get only bacteria. But when you're getting all the DNA and you're sequencing all the DNA, you're sequencing everything. All the, all the microbes, which includes, um, you, you could get also viruses, right, Sonny? with this technology. So we get viruses, we get uh, fungi, we get bacteria, we get archaea. Uh, if there were protozoas there, you probably would get them too. Mycotoxins, mold, possibly as well. That's fungi. Yeah, yep, we would. All would that. Yeah. 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 And, and, and are we just learning how those things all work together and live together in the neighborhood. So we're not 100% sure if say, you know, my neighbor has too many cats, 
the neighborhood's now overrun by feral cats and maybe we should get rid of the cats or, you know, same thing in our gut. We're just learning how everything interacts and we're still figuring out who good guys are or, or maybe they're good guys today, but if suddenly they took over the whole neighborhood, they wouldn't be good guys. Okay. Yeah, that's, it's a fair statement. Well, Go ahead. Go ahead. Adam. I'll just say in the study uh, Rosie and I published earlier, um, she and uh, Dave Wook had done an analysis which they could look at which bacteria are correlated with one another and which are anti-correlated with one another. So which seem to get along well and which seem to be competing with one another. So that's just one simple example of, of a very powerful technique that she's been able to use to better understand what's going on. Um, there were a couple of questions that came in that I'd like to address briefly. One was, um, if people want to be in the study, do they need to make any changes or what are the criteria? So the study is open to both children and adults, ages two to 70, so it's very broad. Um, the main thing that we ask is that people not make any changes in other treatments, in diet or medications or supplements for a couple months before the study and during the study, because that way we'll know that any changes that are observed during that three months are due to the probiotic itself. So people can go ahead and purchase Sun Genomics product on their own. If they want to make other changes, that's fine. But if they want to be in the study, we ask them to please not. What happened? I lost Ms. <laughs> Did you guys lose him? I did too. I think we did, but I can just um, um, maybe help. Oh, there, there he is. is. Okay. Sorry about that. We lost you for a minute. So you said you would like to ask people to please participate in, and then we lost you. Yeah. So people who participate, we ask them not to make any changes in treatments for a couple months before the study starts and during the three months of the study. And then if people want to continue longer, so if they say, oh, well, we saw maybe some improvements, but we want to continue and do another round of testing and revise the probiotic more, then we can continue following them for another three months or six months if they wish. So, and people are asking about the cost of the study. So again, it's $350 for testing and three months of treatment. But then if you want to retest, and we hope many people will, and then get another three months of probiotics, it is another approximately 350. They issue part of the study, there's no cost. There's no cost to fill out the forms to learn about your autism and GI symptoms. But Sun Genomics does have some major, very major costs for this incredible testing that they're doing and for making an, a probiotic just for that person as opposed to mass production for 10,000 people. So the total cost to participate in the study altogether, can you tell them what that will be? Am I correct in it's $700 altogether? $350 if they do just the initial test and the three month follow and the three month probiotic. And then if they want to do retest and get another three months, so a six months total, that would be $700. And there are small discounts for participating in the study, for filling out the questionnaires. Which I strongly encourage other parents to do because we learned so much information from those questionnaires. So um, let's see, looking over, I think you've pretty much of it, quite a bit of my questions. Uh, One question so that just came up is, is the test a blood test? And no, it's just a stool test. So that's often a lot easier to collect from blood from our kids. So that's one of the things we love about it. Let, let me let me just ju jump in real quick here. Um, so people are asking about some of the logistics of the story. Like for example, can all people with autism, uh, children and, and adults can participate? And also if, if they can send their samples from outside of the US, if you can. Yes. Sunny, do you want to take the question about outside of the US? Yes, yeah, sure. We, there are some countries we've been successful in being able to deliver to. Our, our, our general um, uh, delivery method is in the United States, so we're not equipped as a company to be able to do all those types of international 
shipping um, uh, components. Um, but if you're patient with us and really want to participate, we're happy to try to figure out how to get it to work. And you can contact us off the website. There's a phone number on sungenomics.com that you can just call and let them know. And uh, we can work with you to try to figure out how to, how to have you participate. So if a parent is to participate and they, you, how long does it take? If we sudden, if they were to receive this the package and do the stool sample and send that in, how long does it take for that stool to be processed and then you to create a custom uh, product for them and then for them to receive it? In, in, in other words, how long are they going to wait from the time that they send in their poop to when they can first start in the process? It takes about four weeks uh, to get through that process. So once we have the um, sample back, we archive the and put into the freezer and fridges the, the samples to be stored for long-term research. And then we process uh, a small part of it that we um, begin for the custom probiotic formulation and microbiome analysis. And so from end to end, it might be um, as fast as um, 18 days, um, but we, we try to guide around a month's time, and then you'll receive your three months of precision probiotics all delivered at once. And about eight weeks into that, or, or two thirds um, the way through, uh, we prompt for um, to resend you another test so that we can get what the uh, post-intervention changes are from your gut microbiome and give you enough time uh, to um, collect the sample, send it back to Sun Genomics, and for us to turn around uh, the next set of probiotics. Okay. Um, I had one other question in this. All of a sudden, it just slipped. <sighs> yeah, I, I can I can interject just very quickly because there's a, there's been multiple people that have asked this question. So uh, it is about FMTs, like people yeah. that have done FMTs in the past um, or MTT. Or MTTs. I mean, if they can participate in this thing, and also, if you could just—I mean, we, we know this is not really comparable, but if you could say a couple of words about, like, um, to what extent this this treatment is, you know, the same, similar, better, worse than than, than an MTT. I, I mean, I, I I guess I know the answer, but I, I would like you guys if, if you could kind of comment on that. Yeah, really? because we're going to have a lot of questions from a lot of parents wanting to know how did the two correlate? Because, you know. Rosie, do you want to tackle that question about how MTT is different? Well, MTT is different because we're putting a uh, oh, higher diversity of microbes. We're putting a lot without knowing what's going to work and what's not going to work. We're just putting a lot. So, you know, that's number one. Uh, but um, can we compare them with can't, especially because we haven't done this study. So we haven't done this study, so we can't compare it. But one important thing that happened during our MTT study, and Jim kind of mentioned that is that what I think we achieved with the MTT was that we changed the gut environment because we can show, and I can show that with data, that initially our children acquire the microbiota from the donor, but their GI and behavior improvements remained. And the behavior improvements got even more pronounced two years later. And when we look at the microbiota two years later, their microbiota is nothing similar to the donor. So they acquire their own beneficial microbiota. The, the, the gut environment changed in a way that these children now felt better, felt more comfortable, probably ate a more, more diverse diet and managed to achieve a more diverse microbiota. Um, mm -hmm. The gut environment was more inducive to beneficial microbes. And so this is one of the things that um, we think probiotics can do because probiotics right now don't engraft, don't really stick, which is one of the things that was, was mentioned already. Yeah. But they have the potential to affect other microbes, and that's pretty important, and to affect the gut environment. So mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the results. We want to run it. And I really encourage those parents who participate um, to ideally, and I know this is more, uh, it costs more, ideally do more than one sample and do provide us the opportunity to sequence that microbiome after the intervention, to sequence and see how that microbiome looks like after having taken the probiotic um, and maybe the opportunity to change the probiotic if needed. So this is one of the differences that we 
we know exactly what's going in and it's more it's more customized and it's more determined but we also have a lower diversity of microbes going in um i don't know if i address the question i'll let jim and sonny add to it if they want i think to help understand that and i think rosie did a very nice job explaining uh, we are also using many of the same questionnaires for this study as we're using for microbiota transplant study so we're using some of the same questionnaires on GI symptoms, some of the same questionnaires on autism symptoms. So we'll be able to directly compare the outcome of these two studies and see, uh, it could be that some children do better with MTT, and it could be some do better with customized probiotic. We have so much to learn about the microbiome. I think in general, um, to be fair, the, micro, the MTT treatment we use includes two weeks of vancomycin first, to kill off harmful bacteria, and then to do a bowel cleanse. So it's a more complete change of the microbiome. And I think for many children with autism, they may need that. But some children with autism may have less severe changes or may need less intervention. And so customized probiotics may work very well for them. But we really don't know because we haven't treated very many children yet with customized probiotics, but ask us in a few months, and then we'll have data in which we can compare. And through the help of many families, a couple hundred families who have already signed up to be involved in this study, we're going to learn a huge amount about what changes are needed to improve autism and GI symptoms and to help continue to improve this treatment. And so it should continue to evolve as time goes on as we learn more about what is wrong in autism guts and what is optimal. No one can tell you today that, you know, it's exactly these sets of species that are ideal, but we're getting more clues each day about what is the right balance. And as Rosie was saying so nicely, what's the function of those bacteria? For many bacteria, we don't know very much about what their function is. And so we hope to learn a lot. And also, if we can find the right group of microbes, even if it's a few different groups, because we've customized it is much easier to grow them in a fermenter, in a bioreactor, than to obtain fecal samples from donors that have to be super screened, super healthy. Uh, Sonny is nodding, you know, it's so much easier to do this in the lab in a, in a clean and controlled way. So if we can manage to find some of these groups of microbes, I think that will be a, group, a great achievement. Yeah, uh, the sustainability of the product and uh, it's easier to produce. It's easier yeah. to produce that way, you know. Well, you know, how many how many perfect papers are there out there? Honestly, for America. You know, yeah. uh, Americans are not good poopers. I'm sorry, we have horrible diets and we don't make nice poops. So, yeah. So, sure. um, guys, that, that just 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 interjecting on on behalf of of parents that are watching um, and. There, there are, there's a lot of excitement, that's for sure, about the study. And that's kind of the reason why we wanted to do this. So we're very, very appreciative about uh, you guys being here. And, and we want many people to enroll. Uh, there, there are questions about the, the, the inclusion criteria. Uh, whether people getting F FMTs would, would you know, um, somehow, uh, you know, be an issue to, to get enrolled. Uh, if you're taking medication, if that's an issue. And if people can uh, get involved from overseas, I, I guess I guess uh, Sony was addressing that. But there, there is asking specifically if you could mention the country specifically that that you know that, that could enroll, that would be great. Sure. So medications or supplements and treatments in general are not a problem. We just ask that people be constant during those times. The exceptions are if people are actively using antibiotics or actively using other probiotics then that would not be allowed during the study. But those are the main issues. Um, if people have recently done a, a, micro, a fecal transplant, again, we'd want to wait a few months before we enroll them. So the whole point is to make sure that we know that any changes that occur during the treatment are due to the treatment itself and not due to a change someone made a week or two before they started the treatment. So if we can keep those treatments and medications constant, then we'll be very open. And so that's one of the great things about the way we've designed the studies. We've tried to be as inclusive as possible so that almost anyone uh, with autism can participate if they want to. 
But if they don't want to um, uh, be held to those restrictions of not making changes, they can still uh, go through and purchase some genomics product. Just please don't sign up for the study because then we won't properly interpret your data. I hope that makes sense. Yes. And um, I'll just add a, a, a resource that um, parents can um, go to is the Sun Genomics subscriber group on Facebook, where they can read about other enrollees in the, the, the study and their feedback on how things have been going. Um, and they can also look at reviews on Trustpilot. There's a few parents that have posted there. Um, and don't hold us to some of the negative reviews where uh, we're working through some of the the challenges, of course, um, for international deliveries. Um, uh, again, I think contact um, you know, the phone number on the sungenomics.com website. Um, you can also reach out to me individually. Um, my email is sunny at sungenomics.com and we're happy to um, make accommodations as needed. There are certain places that are just hard to ship to, so we apologize. I, uh, I've gone on to your Facebook page. I'm one of your, your members on your Facebook page, and I enjoy reading all of the parents' reviews um, of kids on the spectrum who try the product and may not, even one had said she chose not to participate in the, in the study, and her child was on the spectrum because she wasn't sure if they were going to see any results. And, you know, I understand that because of the cost. So they just went with a simple test and started. And then she saw, started seeing amazing results and then said, well, I wonder if I can still get on, in on the study. So I just want to send a word out to her. Yes, you can get in on it and help us get your data. And then for the other mom that I read her comment, which was phenomenal. And I love this, Sunny, I have to tell you. She said, um, I think she has a teenager. And the teenager started uh, taking these probiotics, but that teenager's nonverbal and uses um, an Otcom device. Um, and that teenager typed to her, mom finally figured it out. And when she, she asked, what do you mean? Are you feeling better? And the, the answer was yes, after so long. So when I hear those kind of stories, I, I just, I, I get all excited because I know that feeling. I know that feeling personally how amazing it is to watch our kids just feel better and it's life-changing. So I strongly encourage other parents to go out there and participate in these studies because um, what do you get to lose, really? I mean, the kid gets better, your life gets better. It's a few bucks to try it, you know? <laughs> but honestly, not only that, but we learned so much from the research and um, the more we learn, the more we change things for everybody else. So, uh, somebody else is asking a question. If you need a diagnosis of autism, do you participate in the study? Of course. And yes. The answer is yes. We do need a diagnosis of autism because that's how we'll know that this um, data is directly for people with autism. But people without autism, anyone can still purchase Sun Genomics products and try it. So even before we tried MTT, I'd like to say that I did try some probiotics with my kid, um, along with all the other biomedical stuff that we did. And I did see changes in him. And that did give me an idea that maybe this is something going on with his GI. So, so at that time, I was really thinking a custom probiotic would make more sense because just throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it sticks doesn't seem like always the best method, but you know, customizing a product towards uh, in, an individual just seems to make more sense to me because we're all individuals and we all have completely different microbiomes. So um, I'm excited about this research and I'm really excited that you guys are, are doing this and moving forward. And I really wanna encourage other parents to participate in research and um, continue to share the data because you're helping all of us, and we're helping the other families who haven't gotten it. Um, let's see. Again, I want to just thank everybody for participating. Is there anything else you guys want to add to this at all? I think just we're very excited about the study. Uh, again, large probiotic study. We're going to have a ton of data. Rosie and her team will be very busy analyzing the microbiome data. I have the easy part. The autism and GI data is a lot easier to analyze when she has to look at a thousand plus species. 
um, and then try to connect that to symptoms. It's very complicated, but I'm so glad to be working with her and with Sunny on this. And we really encourage that if people participate, um, hopefully they can really participate and stay with us so we can gather information and longitudinal data and, and actually that will help them and us more than if they just do one sample in three months. How long before we actually, when the study is over, how long does it take before you process all this data? Because that's a deep dive into a lot of poop. How do you, how long is it gonna take you before you're actually able to publish that data so we can we can all know what you're learning? Publish actually takes longer. Um, yeah. So, but hopefully we'll we'll get a sense of what's going on. I don't know, six, um, six months to 12 months after we get the data. It does take time, of course, but publishing takes longer because um, we try to publish in really good journals, which happens with our MPT study, which um, I will say a very recognized journal, which is the Nature Journal, um, doesn't even send out for review more than 90% of the papers they get. So they reject directly 90%. Um, ours went out for review, which I was really happy, but it was it was not accepted there. So that makes things take longer, you know, and um, it's for, for reviewers don't always appreciate um, what we're doing because it's so new, you know, that um, it requires more controls, which we didn't have for our MTP stuff. I think one of the things that's so exciting is the technology is changing so rapidly too. 10 years ago, the study would not have been possible. Um, five years ago, the cost of the study would be several times what they are today. This technology is changing rapidly. I think people are very aware of DNA, but bacterial DNA is far more complex, as Rosie was saying, 100 times more complex than human DNA. These are so many bacteria involved. But it's so exciting to see how the technology has changed and is continuing to change and um, will really allow us to learn a lot more. And I also uh, I also think that it's, it's uh, fascinating that we can learn more about ourselves, right? We uh, Through this technology, we're 99% uh, microbes, so uh, we can learn more about ourselves. I'm extremely fascinated by it. And and since participating and learning a little bit about the microbiome and your research, I just, I keep reading so many new studies, I mean, about everything to do with the microbiome and they're looking into so many different issues. You know, I think it's just the wave of the future and the way that we'll, we'll, medicine's gonna go. Individualize, learn, this is the way we treat people for, all kinds of issues from autoimmune issues, cancer, you name it. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, they're doing the studies now. So so thank you guys for starting that innovation and that new research. Um, super exciting stuff. What would you like to say to other researchers out there or other physicians out there who are just learning about your research who might be pediatricians or GI doctors who are just starting to learn about this stuff? Is there anything you'd like to tell them about it? for us, for our parents, for other parents and patients out there that might need help from somebody like you to take this message to our physician and say, hey, look what I learned. What would you like to help them tell their doctors? Well, I think one of the things that's very helpful is the very nice summary that Sun Genomics gives. So they do show a lot of data, but also a very readable summary that the parents and the physicians can read and learn from and get a sense of what is different about this child and what changes might be needed in their diet or other things to better help them. So I, I think that's a great service that Sunny has done. And as time goes on, as we learn more, we'll be able to provide better information to families and their doctors. Well, I am so excited. Thank you guys so much for, for sharing all of this information with us. And I think it's, I don't have much more to ask. Do you guys have anything you'd like to share? Sunny, do you want to make a closing comment? Uh, I just w would um, like to thank everybody and the families that um, uh, have engaged with Sun Genomics and um, for welcoming us, uh, us into the ecosystem here. And we continue to um, be open to that engagement. So if you're a physician that has questions, please please uh, do communicate with us or, or email me. Uh, we have affiliate programs and clinical programs alike 
or if you're just a parent uh, wanting to learn more, we're happy to engage. That's that's one of our values. Um, and so uh, really appreciative of everyone here today. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, thank you very much. I don't know what else to uh, say, but thank you so much. And I guess we'll, we'll sign up. And parents, please go to the links that we're adding. Um, I'm super excited to share all the information with you guys. And if you would like to sign up for anything, go to the links. We're going to attach that here. And we at the Autism Research Coalition firmly believe that autism is medical and therefore treatable. And we want to share that with everyone. Thanks, guys.